Hello, veteran Owen Two in here. Welcome back, and we are replaying Final Fantasy IV. In the last episode, we acquired the Self Summon, the Excalibur, some augments from Yang, and the Lunar Whale. In this episode, we are going to check out the Lunar Whale. We're going to find out what this ship has to offer here. So basically, uh, yeah, we got like little capsule thingies here that we can use to sleep in. Which is pretty nice, I guess. And then we have an electronic fat chocobo here. And we can look at the bestiary, the event theater, or the music box. I guess I can look at the bestiary for a second. A couple enemies I didn't even look at from before. And yeah, there's probably a lot of enemies yet that I'm still missing. That's fine. Like some, I think some enemies in the desert and Kaipo and Tomo Boy. Underground, maybe? Or no, that's probably in the uh, antline cave. Eh. But yeah, as you can see, uh, you can view all the enemies that you fought. You can actually look at the items that they carry as well. So if you want to know what I what enemies carry what, you can actually look at their treasure list. As you can see, this particular enemy right here, his ultra rare drop is an X potion. So that's kind of a cool way to find out what enemies carry what in case you want certain enemies to drop certain items for you. That's how you can find out. Like, uh, that's how to find out where uh, you can get a lot of the tails in the game, like blue tails, green tails, all that kind of stuff. And why did I leave? I don't want to leave. Alright, as you can see, there's some kind of crystal thing in the center here. We're going to leave that alone for now. And we're just going to examine this cube-looking thing. Now, this cube-looking thing allows us to take off, so we can use that to fly around like so. But the only way for us to actually go to the moon is to, uh, well, examine the, uh, the crystal here in the center. And uh, when we do that, Look at that! Our ship will go to the moon! So now we're here, we're on the moon. Why does make you feel what way? What are you talking about there, Cecil? What's he talking about? Yeah, same moon. <laughs> yeah, well, it's definitely not flat. Yeah, that is pretty incredible. But anyways, before we go to where I want to go uh, eventually or ultimately, uh, let's explore the moon. I guess I'll fill out the map. As you can see, we got some caves in that area there. And we have another cave over here. Yeah, I'm just going to fill up the map. Get it over with. Get it done with. I like to be tidy. So, let's do that. surface of the moon is a fairly small area. Oh, right there, that, that is the lair of the father, that's where the uh, king of the Eidolons is. Not the same king as Leviathan, he's like supposed to be the, the ruler of the Eidolons, the ultimate ruler I guess, if you want to call him that. And over here, that's the Crystal Palace. We'll be going there eventually. But first... 
I'm gonna land my ship right here. Apparently, being on the moon makes Cecil feel very strange. And this is the Hummingway abode. Wait a minute, Hummingway? Yeah, these creatures here kind of look like, uh, kind of look like naming way. One of these creatures here, uh, has something. Yeah, that's right, okay, yeah, one of these creatures actually sell items. You can buy dry ethers here, elixirs, but the best item you can get here is a siren. You can actually purchase sirens in the 3D versions of Final Fantasy IV. I think you have to get certain enemies to drop them, or you can steal them in the 2D iterations of, the, of, uh, of Final Fantasy IV, but in this version you can actually buy them. Uh, which is nice. Uh, I believe there's certain enemies in uh, the Giant of Babel that you can actually steal sirens from. But that's tedious and you have to do that for a very long time. Uh, with Edge. But uh, over here, we can get the Level Lust Augment. I believe if you have this equipped on a character, you can uh, get 50% more experience from battles. So that's pretty nice. So yeah, these creatures, they're supposed to be about changing names, and I don't know, it's weird. But in the uh, the 2D iterations, these things uh, weren't rabbits, they were just some goofy, weird-looking guy with blonde hair. And hey, wait a minute, look at this guy, he's one of the Eidolans. How the hell did you make it to the moon? How did you end up up here? How do you wander around and end up on the moon? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, bye. See you later. But yeah, uh, apparently there's eight of those guys to find in all. And uh, for finding all of them, you get the piercing magic augment for your spellcasters. Basically what that augment does is it makes it so you can cast spells and bypass the reflect status. Which, you know, it's not bad. It's got its uses, but I'm not going to go out of my way to freaking get that right now. I technically could probably get that augment right now because I think you have to go to the, uh, the lair of the father or one of those things that's hanging around there. That's probably like the hardest one to find uh, just by the sheer uh, difficulty difficulty of the battles for this point of the game. But yeah, I just want to do the story stuff first and then I'll worry about all that crap later on. I don't need piercing magic right now, so... What we want to do is we want to pilot our lunar whale right about here. And before we go out there, I'm going to show off my abilities, most notably my auto battle abilities. I have auto battle with Leviathan. I'm going to be spamming Leviathan. I got Cecil with Brace, that way he can take less damage, because the enemies in this area hit extremely hard. And if you have draw attacks on Cecil, he's going to be taking a lot of damage if you don't defend or use an ability like Brace. Rosa using Prey, just because I can't really think of anything better for her to do right now with auto battle. Then I have haste mar march on edge to hopefully speed up uh, the party and uh, if I do need to heal Cecil then uh, then Rosa's turn will come up faster then. So there you go. This next part is going to be a little rough. Save my game. Uh, what am I saying? Uh, that's from Sidia. Yeah, I'll save over this one. All 
Alright, and this is the lunar tunnels. So yeah, we're gonna fill out the maps like we do in any other area. And yeah, I want my auto battle. Yeah, as you can see, these things hit re really, really, really hard. Come on, man. They all get to attack first. That's a crock of shit. As you can see, yeah, he takes a lot less damage now. What the hell? Oh, I know what happened. I should have canceled auto battle. Yeah, because as soon as you take an action, the brace thing wears off. Okay, I gotta be mindful not to screw that up. I like the theme that plays here too. It's the same theme that plays when you're uh, becoming a paladin. What, have you been here? before or something yeah very very eerily quiet <laughs> These monsters are disgusting nasty shit yeah we got flans and puddings and cellular enemies and all kinds of nasty shit are they not meant cellular Maybe like amoeba looking things? I don't know. I don't really know how to describe what the enemies look like. <laughs> Alright, and in this chest we get a golden apple, but it's an enemy ambush, unfortunately. So yeah, we're gonna have to fight some procreites and whatever the hell these things are called. I think I don't know. I really hate how I can't get that fucking brace command off before they attack. It's annoying. We should be good now. Yeah, that's the only thing I don't like about Brace. It doesn't go into effect fast enough. more pudding. Hey, maybe we'll get lucky and one of these guys will drop rainbow pudding, huh? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, right. Probably not gonna happen. And in this chest, we get a Stardust that will cast the uh, the Comet spell when used as an item. Alright, we get a Lunar Curtain. Now, I believe Lunar Curtains actually make you immune to damage for a little while, along with giving you Reflect. 
Cast Reflect and nullifies, oh wait, okay, it nullifies physical damage. So yeah, Lunar Curtains are pretty good. They're not too bad. Wish I had more of them. Yeah, Cecil being in the background uh, row for this battle probably isn't really a bad thing, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Because, yeah, they, they will all get to attack before his Brace Command goes into effect, which is bullcrap. Oh, well. Actually, yeah, maybe I should have Cecil in the back row for this next part. Maybe I should. That way he'll take less damage. Also thinking about get maybe I should give him a curse ring as well. Because yeah, the next area they're gonna be using they're gonna be enemies using a lot of fire-based attacks that deal a lot of damage no matter what. Even if you have fire protection. So maybe, just maybe, I could equip the cursed ring, that way he uh, absorbs that damage. And uh, that would be beneficial. Could be something you could do, I guess. Ooh, three sirens. All right. Those those are definitely useful. All right. We got some other new enemies here. We got like a grenade and some other fucking eyeball-looking thing. Well, they I don't know. They look like cells. Or what cells would look like maybe if looked at him under a microscope or something like that. I don't know. I like the moon theme as well. It's kind of like a creepy variation of the uh, of the over. What am I trying to say? The overworld theme on uh, the planet. It's pretty badass. I like it. Poison crap that I keep getting here. Alright, so this is the Lunar Tunnel East. I don't think there's any treasure in this one. I think it's just a pretty straightforward path. And just like that, the map is complete and we get three more sirens. Yes! Very nice. And this is the Crystal Palace. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here. And yeah, we get an HP and status restored. So yeah, if you had KO'd characters or status ailments, I believe uh, that circle also 
restores that kind of stuff. Then over here, we're, we get our MP restored. And again, I don't understand why they don't just have one circle or whatever that does everything, but it's just the way they did it in this game. Yeah, who are you? For soya, huh? So yeah, this guy is a Lunarian or Moon person. Oh, yeah, our planet. Okay, that makes sense. That is horrible. Hmm. Tainted hearts. So yeah, I guess that's why Kane uh, is able to be uh, manipulated is because he has a so-called tainted heart, I guess. And apparently Golbez does as well. So there's actually somebody pulling the strings on Golbez. Zemus, huh? Interdimensional elevator? Oh. Ah. That's how the Giant of Babel appears. I was wondering where they stored that thing. They actually teleport the Giant of Babel down to the planet. Alright, that makes more sense. Oh. Okay, so you guys thought to be above us now, huh? Yeah, where did, where did the lunar whale come from? Cluya, huh? So Cluya was responsible for the Devil's Road and the airships. Hmm. Did he know? What? You mean a guy named Cluya is my dad? It's crazy. So that would make you my uncle. Wow. Spitting image of Kluya in, in, in his youth, huh? Yeah, we got there's a freaking barrier around the tower. We can't do shit. Oh. How? How are you, how are you going to do that? Okay. Well, he just says he can do it, so I guess he can do it. And yes, Fosoya joins the party. Uncle Unky Fosoya. Yep, that's right. This guy is Cecil's uncle. And he is, uh... He's in our party now. Yeah, it's definitely a weighty destiny. And Cecil's half Lunarian. Pretty crazy. 
Yep, you sure did. Alright, so it's time to look at Unky Fasoya's crap. Or, yeah. What am I doing here? Yeah, Unky Fasoya's crap. As you can see, he's kind of like a mage type character. He's got diamond equipment, luminous robes. He just might. Eh, he's got some crap equipment here. But yeah, he comes with uh, some crappy equipment. Let's look at his abilities. Alright, this character has the Bless Command, which ra gradually restores MP to the party. This ability is actually really useful in the 3D versions of Final Fantasy IV. It is next to worthless in the 2D iterations. This, Yeah, this ability just sucks in the 2D versions of the game, but it's actually pretty good in the 3D versions, and this guy is kind of like Tella in the fact that he comes with a lot of white and black magic spells. Yeah, he's got a Rise, Holy, Karaja, Reflect, you know, he's got pretty much every white magic spell you could possibly have. And then for black magic, this guy knows Flare, Tornado, Meteor, Osmos, Death, he, he knows a lot of good spells. So yeah, this character is a very versatile mage. He is t terribly weak defensively, so I'm going to uh, change up my party a little bit here. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to have Cecil in the back row for the next part. I'm thinking about it, though. So what I'm going to do now is just, uh, I think, just end the episode. That's all for this episode of... Uh, this replay of Final Fantasy IV, I'm going to off-screen walk back to the airship, and then we're going to head back to the planet. This is Veteran0121. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.